Let us now work through some practice problems. This particular problem is from study guide. It is asking us to calculate the minimum size of copper conductor required for a group of three three phase 460 volt wound rotor induction motors with nameplate ratings of 10 horsepower, 7.5 horsepower, and 5 horsepower. And we can assume that each motor has 75 degree rated terminals. According to NEC 430.24, Minimum opacity of the conductor supplying group of motors can be calculated as shown below. We have the minimum conductor opacity equal to 125% of the highest motor FLC plus the sum of all motor FLCs. Now, whenever I mention a uh, code reference in the solution while working through these problems, I would highly recommend you to actually maybe stop the lecture and open that code reference and go through it on your own and interpret it and see how I'm using it over here because these code references are even more important because they're being used on in these practice problems okay so please make sure that you take some time to develop familiarity with the code as I've mentioned previously as well navigation of the code is 50% of the effort and interpretation is the remaining 50% in fact in many cases if you can actually find the relevant code section then applying it is not that difficult as you can see over here all we need to do is 1.25 of the highest motor FLC and then simply add the FLC of all the remaining motors. Based on NEC table 430.250, again, these are the tables that we uh, just discussed under part 14 of article 430. So we are dealing with three phase application. So we have three phase motors, which are discussed in table 430.250. FLCs can be extracted from there. FLC of 10 horsepower motor is 14 amps, seven and a half is 11 amps, and five horsepower is 7.6 amps. I would recommend you go to the table and verify these details for yourself. Once you have verified them, it's a simple plug and play. So 1.25 times 14 amps plus 11 amps because it's simply the sum of the motor FLCs and to uh, and then we'll add 7 7.6 amps and that gives us a total of 36.1 amps according to NEC table 310.15 B16 this is the table that we discussed during conductor sizing uh, we are going to look at 75 degree rated tables and we need a copper conductor it doesn't really mention what exactly the type of the conductor it should be but it should be 75 degree C copper and uh, we can see that that a number 8 AWG copper conductor for 75 degree C rated insulation has an opacity of 50 amps which shall be sufficient for the given application so if you go lower then you will not be able to um, satisfy this 36.1 amp requirement but a number 8 AWG copper conductor 75 degree C rated will give us an opacity of 50 amps which will be okay for this application. Problem number two builds upon the previous problem and it is asking us to determine the size of inverse time breaker for branch circuit over protection of the 10 horsepower motor that we saw earlier. As I mentioned earlier, section 430.52 deals with branch circuit over current protection and 430.52C exception number one uh, allows us to make use of table 430.52 which I also mentioned and uh, it will let us know what percentage we can apply on the FLC and if that number is not a standard rating of the over and protective device inverse time breaker in this case then we can go with the next size up in problem number one we've already calculated the FLC of 10 horsepower motor as 14 amps by making use of table 430.250 now coming back to the table 430.52, maximum rating of inverse time circuit breaker for a wound rotor application is 150% of its FLC, which is 1.50 times FLC. And in our case, it is 1.50 times 14 amps, which gives us 21 amps. So you can see that we've established the maximum allowable rating of the OCPD by making use of these two tables and the relevant code section. But we are not done yet because when we look at table 240.6a, which we discussed in overcurrent protection, it gives us the standard rating of the inverse time circuit breaker. We find that 21 amps is actually not a standard rating. So we will make use of the next size up provision that is mentioned in 430.5 
two c exception number one and we will make use of uh, the uh, higher rating of the breaker which is 25 amps since 21 amps is not a standard rating so the answer to this question is 25 amps it's not 21 amps and you can see that now we are starting to make use of different code sections some within the same article and some in the other articles problem number three further builds upon the two previous problems and it is asking us now to calculate the size of inverse time circuit breaker for overcurrent protection of the feeder that supplies the group of three phase 460 volt wound rotor induction motors and these are the three motors that we already know and the terminals are 75 degrees C okay so the difference over here is that in problem number two we have basically determined the OCPD size for the 10 horsepower motor okay uh, for the branch circuit there are two other branch circuits one for seven and a half and the other one for five horsepower but problem number three is asking us to now determine the OCPD size for the feeder and the feeder we've already sized in problem number one and we've also sized the biggest uh, branch circuit OCPD in problem number two based on NEC table 430.250 FLCs are as follows for the 10 horsepower motor we know it's 40 amps for seven and a half horsepower it's 11 amps and for five horsepower it is 7.6 amps we can size the inverse time circuit breaker for feeder protection application as per nec 430.62 i would recommend you to actually go through this uh, it's actually a two-step process the first step involves determining the largest branch circuit overcurrent device which we actually did in the previous problem because we determined the branch circuit overcurrent device for the 10 horsepower motor which happens to be the biggest motor and it will have the biggest OCPD and it turned out to be 25 amps in order to do that we made use of table 430.52 and table 240.6a in step number two we will size the overcurrent protection by adding FLCs of the motors to the 25 amps okay this 25 amps is the size of the OCPD for the largest branch circuit we are not going to use 21 amps and we are not going to use 14 amps we are going to add the motor FLCs 11 amps and 7.6 amps to the size of the OCPD that we have determined in step number one it's a very common mistake students do they sometimes add the FLCs uh, to the FLC of the largest motor or sometimes do 125% on, on the largest motor simply and uh, sometimes they simply add it to uh, the 21 amps which is 1.5 times FLC you have to do it on the OCPD that you've selected for the largest bronze circuit in um, as, as per step number one okay so 11 amps plus 7.6 amps plus 25 amps give us 43.6 amps here's the next mistake that students make they're like okay 43.6 amp is not a standard uh, rating so we're going to size up it doesn't work that way you're not allowed to si size up in step number two you are allowed to go the ne to the next higher rating uh, as offered by table 240.6 a in step number one but not in step number two in step number two you can only size down okay so the next size down the step because 43.6 amps is not a standard rating the next size down is 40 amps which we will make use of so in this lecture we learned about code requirements for motors and we also did relevant practice problems we sized the conductor for the motor we sized um, the overcurrent protective device for a single motor for a branch circuit and then we also sized overcurrent protective device for a feeder that is feeding multiple branch circuits as you can see motors article 430 is actually quite large it has multiple parts the first five parts in my opinion the sections the tables that I've mentioned within those first five parts are very important and you can see that while we were doing the problems we actually made use of most of those sections so please make sure that you have very good familiarity with those sections and the first five parts but still I would recommend you to actually go through the entire article 430 so that you can pick up on some um, other details as well so that you have some familiarity with that article 440 is also technically for motors but it is for the motors that are used in refrigeration applications so if uh, you want you can go through that and you will notice that while going through 430 it makes some cross references to 440 as well 
but the main article that addresses motors that are quite commonly used in industrial setting in residential and commercial settings are is, is basically your article 430 and it is one of the biggest articles and very important article for further practice i recommend you to go through the quiz at the end of the lecture and also consider the prompt sets in the study guide thank you